Yo, what's going on guys? You're watching jQuery for Beginners Lesson 9 and in this video I want to start adding some content to our HTML document. <laughs> okay then gang, so as you can see up here, I've added a new section to the HTML just beneath the last section right here. That's got an ID of tweets. In that I've got H2 saying latest tweet, that's this green box right here. Then within that I've got a div tag and within that a P tag saying for all tweets, check out our Twitter. So, what I want you to imagine is this. I've created some super duper code to pull in my latest tweet from my Twitter account. You don't need to worry about what code I've used to do that, just imagine it. So I've got hold of that tweet and I've stored it in a string right there within a div tag. So I've just uh, made some HTML, stored it in a string with my latest tweet embedded in it, all right? So that is stored in a variable called tweet. So now that we've got that tweet, what I'm going to do is show you how we would dynamically add content using jQuery to the document. And there's a few different ways we can do this. So I'm going to show you a few. And uh, we're going to start with the append method. So I've written them all down here, by the way. Uh, so I'm going to show you six. Append, prepend, before, after, HTML, and text. So we'll start with this top one, append. But first of all, what I want to do is go out and grab this element because this is where we're going to do all the action. This is where we're going to add content, yeah? So to do that, I'm going to use the dollar sign, then grab, first of all, the tweets section like that, and then get the div tag within that, all right? So that's the element. Now we're going to operate on this element using these different methods. And the first one is append. And then within brackets, what we want to do is say tweet because that's the content we're appending right there. So what append does, my friends, is take this element and then it says, I want to add some content to the bottom of this element, all right? So this is the element we've got and we're gonna add some content at the bottom of it. So here, after the P, right? Because that would be the bottom. That's what append does and it takes this variable, this is the content you want to append to this element. Make sense, right? So let's save that and see what happens. Check out this on the right. Now we've got this tweet appended to this div. It's beneath the p tag because we said append, which means go to the bottom. The Big Fat Live ham versus cheese. All right, so that is append. Uh, by the way, I've styled this already in the CSS. Um, I've given this a style right here. You can see margin, 20 pixels, blah, de, blah, de, blah. So that's where these styles are coming from. All right, so let's look at the next one, which is prepend, which is the exact, oops, prepend, that's right, the exact opposite of append, right? It adds content to the top of an element. So whereas before we added after the P, this time it's gonna add it to the very top, which is before the P. So I'm gonna save this, keep your eye out down here. And now it's switched around, you can see it's gone to the top of the element, cool. All right, what's next? We have got before, so let's put before in. And this time, I don't want to grab the div because I don't want to put it before the div. I want to put it before the p tag, right? So let's put p and save it. And then this shouldn't change on the right because it's still going to be in the same position just before the p tag. So let's click save. And yep, it's still the same. Cool. But if we change this to after, this time what we're saying is grab the p tag and put this after the p tag, you know, this content. So let's save again. And now you can see it's gone after the content. Cool. All right. The next two are a little bit different. If we change this to HTML, then what it's going to do is take this P tag and all this bit here, all the inner content of the P tag, it's going to replace with this, right? Because it's saying take the HTML within that P tag and replace it with whatever we've got here, tweet. Now, I don't want to do that because we don't normally have a div tag within a p tag. That just doesn't make sense. So I'm going to delete the p from this selector. So what I'm doing this time is grabbing this and I'm going to replace all the content that's within this div tag with here. So it's going to replace this p with this div. So let's save it and find out what it does. Yep, you can see right there, it's done exactly that. All right, now if I change this to text and put tweet, then this doesn't really make sense. First of all, we want that P tag again. So I'm gonna change this to P. That makes a little bit more sense. But after this, we're saying we want the text of that P tag to be the tweet variable, which is this. Now this is not all text, all right? Some of this is code. Now if I save this, it's gonna print out all of this 
as text to the screen. So I'll show you that, I'll press save. And you can see right here now, we've got all of that there, yeah? But if I say, I just want this to be the tweet right here, click save again. This time it's just updating the text of that P tag and not inserting the code, the div tag. All right, so they are a few of the ways that we can add code dynamically or add content dynamically to our web pages using jQuery. Really simple methods. There are a few more. So what I'll do is leave a link down below and uh, you can go and check out that link on the jQuery website. Have a play around with a few more of those methods. Otherwise, guys, if you enjoy these videos, don't forget to subscribe, like and share and I'll see you in the next one.